it's Desiree. Right now, you're watching a speed paint that I did for my birthday for myself. Um, nothing's funner than drawing, and I figured I should reward myself for my birthday. So yeah. Um, anyway, the topic of today's video is gonna be like a college update. It's just kind of a, a vlog of me talking about how my college experience has been so far. So I started college about a month ago, and there's a lot of things I want to talk about. First of all, I'm a visual arts major, so this is kind of gonna be duly a college experience sort of vlog thing and also a art school sort of vlog thing because I think a lot of people want that sort of content. I remember when I was trying to apply for college, a lot of people would talk about like big art schools but no one would really talk about their experiences in state schools when they're doing an art program. Um, I'm a visual arts major with a concentration in painting. I decided that painting is what I actually really want to do. It's what I really love. I really like sequential storytelling and I plan to continue you my pursuit in sequential storytelling like comic animation like I still want to get better at that and I still want to learn about it but painting is where I'm at right now honestly like that's what I want to do I, like I can't really see my art or my life without me painting it doesn't make any sense for me and I also realized a while ago that a lot of the reason why everyone wanted to do animation was because when I was 13 I just thought there was a shit ton of jobs in animation honestly um now i actually know how the industry works like i have a better understanding because i've had a bunch of teachers that work in the industry or are trying to get their foot in the door in the industry and i know that this idea that there's so many jobs in animation isn't exactly true and even if it were true because so many people think that animation has so many jobs out there for them it's super competitive you have to be the best 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 and even if you are you might not get the job you might not get that position and i also sort of thought that animation had steady positions whereas like a lot of other art is kind of based on freelance i thought that animation you could just get a job at a studio and you'd be set forever but i mean even if you do get a studio the way animation works is that you get the studio job and for like a few months like you work on a project for some amount of time it might be a few months it might be a year it might be like three weeks or something and then after you work on that project you're done you don't have the job at the studio anymore and i didn't really understand that until like around now and so i don't really have this illusion of how animation works anymore i have a way better actual understanding of how the industry works so yeah i, I now understand that art is like how you approach it and how you make your career happen you have to build it yourself and you can't rely on this idea of a steady job i'm just gonna do what i want do and I think what I want to do is painting and it has always been painting I just didn't realize like I just thought that animation was like a more valuable pursuit I was gonna get more money from it but yeah no it's not how it works Anyway, I'm taking five classes, a uh, writing class, a math class, the freshman class, which I took in comic study, I'm taking a drawing class and a design class. I plan my schedule really, really poorly and I have to wake up at seven o'clock every day or eight o'clock every day, which is killing me. Like, I don't have an issue with waking up early at all. Like, I would really rather wake up early, honestly. I think it puts me on a better start for my day. But I hate being required to wake up early, and especially so early and having such a huge time crunch because I'm waking up early. Like, I'd rather wake up really early on my own accord and, like, draw or meditate or, like, do something for a couple of hours before class. And if I try to do that now, then I would have to wake up at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> which means I would have to go to sleep for, like, 9 o'clock and it's just super impractical like I'm in college I can't go to sleep at nine o'clock there's like events and stuff happening on campus till like 10 and 11 o'clock so yeah it's, it's, super, it's super impractical for me to like try to do that but yeah I might try anyway because like I really do like the feeling of waking up really early and the feeling of having a little bit of a head start before classes start yeah like I hate waking up and the first thing that I do in the, in the day is school like i just want some time to like breathe and take everything in first um anyway all of my classes are super easy i couldn't skip the english which sucks it's like english 102 or 106 or something i don't know but i'm really upset that i couldn't skip it because i went to like this really intense college high school right and so i already know everything in this curriculum like i already know how to do 
everything that they want us to do i mean and all that all that we're doing the whole semester is like two annotated bibliographies and two essays it's only like six to eight pages and when i was in high school you would have like a, a really similar thing and it'd be like four pages and i would have to do that like every two weeks like this isn't like hard or like new or foreign to me this is just like more work that i don't need <laughs> like i already know how to do it and now i'm just like wasting my time trying to do this and it makes me really upset actually but what can i do about it nothing <laughs> I mean, it's great to like refine your English skills and the topic of the class is like language and prejudice. So half, half of the essay, <laughs> half of the essay and like annotated bibliography is just going to be me like ranting about like racist words and stuff. Like it's not, it's not going to be like super difficult or anything. It's, it's kind of stuff that I do anyway. Like I kind of have all these feelings and like ideas about racist things or like sexist things all the time anyway. But now I just have to write eight Eight pages about it like <laughs> and find sources about it oh i just i am not excited for this class but i mean the teacher's really nice and there's like some interesting ideas being explored especially in like the book and stuff but we have six to eight page things due every like week <laughs> and i was like uh i want to do other things that's another thing that like kind of bothered me is that we kind of have topics that we kind of have to be a part of i didn't take the honors english because i didn't take any honors classes except for my comics class which accidentally ended up being an honors class like i didn't want it to be and that's because i went to like super college prep school super hard super honors sort of thing or whatever i didn't want to do it again like i didn't see the benefit in like being in that sort of environment honestly like yeah there's a lot of people who are exchanging a lot of ideas but in the end i just kind of wanted to be with people like i i kind of became disconnected from from like the general population like the general viewpoint for things because at my school everyone was really really smart and really really liberal liberal really into like social justice and stuff and that's great and it's really great to be around that sort of group of people but i would come home and i would just be like why is everyone not thinking like me like i just could not understand like the concept of people having a different opinion really there's people at my school who have different opinions but they all sort of lied in the same playing field of opinions it was like here's this idea and it's like a super feminist idea Idea, but here's this aspect of it that i disagree with here like when you're out of an honors program when you're in like a regular populist class people don't have that get it's not it's not like a guaranteed stance and like that's so weird to me but i mean like i'm in my comics class and that's an honors class Oh yeah, I went on that whole tangent about honors because my comics teacher is an English teacher and she was teaching, she's teaching honors English and I could have taken that, but I didn't because like I could take, like I'm like more than qualified to be in the honors program, but I just don't want to. And I kind of wish that I'd taken like some honors English at least. My math, like I'm definitely not doing honors math because the kid, no, no, <laughs> not doing honors math, but like English, like I'm so bored so yeah i kind of wish i had taken that but anyway okay so my math class is like really 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 easy it's like financial math payroll and um commission and like that kind of stuff like so easy literally just multiply add subtract it's super logical and there's there's really nothing that's hard about it the only thing that i'm worried about and i've had like be justified to me while i was doing the homework is that i haven't done math in so long like i finished all of my high school math my first semester junior year i was done with math like i st i stopped taking math because i was already finished all of my requirements and there's no reason for me to take another math so i didn't i didn't take any more math and i was like yeah whatever i kind of hate math so whatever so i haven't done math in two whole years and so like i was doing the homework for my math class yesterday first of all i underestimated how long it would take because like the last math that i took were like super difficult math and it would take like forever to do the homework and so i kind of got back into this kind of math like basic algebra kind of math I, I was like yeah of course it's gonna be super easy whatever like it's just adding and subtracting i'm gonna get through this homework super quickly whatever whatever yeah no <laughs> like like we had like i don't know like 150 or something problems for math and that's not like new to me that's like at my old school we have the same thing basically right but it still took me like three hours even though it was just basic <laughs> basic algebra basic addition basic subtraction and 
yeah like, but i think this is the only math that i have to take i mean just from like the way that things were explained to me i think this is the only math i have to take like the whole time i'm in college so whatever <laughs> i mean i get through this i'm done um my comics class is really really great we just read comics and we discuss like the ideas in the comics and like the implications of the comic and my teacher is like super feminist super i, I hate the word social justice but i'm just gonna be like social justice and the the class is like not so hip on those things like they kind of it's not that they don't believe in those things like it's not like they don't agree with like feminist idea and feminist thought i mean some people really don't like some people in the class are just like what the what the heck are you talking about miss teacher girls have it so great what they get free drinks at the, they get free drinks at the club what are you talking about and i was like oh god but a lot of people do acknowledge like the discrimin like the discrimination and the difference or whatever and a lot of it is her telling us ideas like i mean like it's kind of like super repetitive for me in a lot of, in a lot of ways but like a lot of it is like social justice 101 like and it's like expressed through comics we read um el duffo right and it's about this girl and she's like a little duff kid and the first like the thing that we talked about was ableism and she kind of had to explain the concept like most of it was like her explaining the concept of ableism and like trying to like bring to light this discrimination that we have against disabled or handicapped people right and like that's all well and good and everything but like i, I don't really know about all that like i'm just like okay um anyway could we talk about like character development or something like uh, i already know about all of this and a lot of times i don't really participate in the discussions but i've started like participating in discussions more and it makes the class significantly less boring yeah but a lot of the class is her sort of just talking about this kind of stuff i mean the required reading is literally just comic and i've already like read almost all of the books like they're really easy they're they're a comic book and they're all like really good books and we only have four papers in the class and they're short one page papers and i'm so happy about that it's not hard so that's cool and i think the class is gonna like sort of pick up and like morph a little bit i think a lot of the reason why it was so weird and like ugh, is because i mean our first book was like that scott mcleod book that i hate <laughs> You know, like, the Scott McCloud, like, comic theory books? I mean, they're cool, and, like, they're really educational and stuff, but I don't care about comics theory that much. I mean, like, I really like Scott McCloud's making comics, because, like, I reference that all the time, especially, like, that, like, huge face chart, and, and, like, when I'm, like, struggling with, like, trying to make a transition, I reference that all the time, but this is understanding comics. It's so weird. It's just, like, comics history and, like, all these ideas, and a lot of it is him trying to like convince you that comics is like a valid art form i don't need convincing that comics is a valid art form <laughs> like whatever like i already know i i i'm i'm doing comics so yeah i i think there's only like two people in the class who actually do comics and then like the rest of the class i'm not even joking i'm not even exaggerating there's like two people in the, co the class who like draw comics that's like me and another art student right and then literally like the entire rest of the class is just like superhero comics boys like I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating it's like like okay so in the course description she specifically put in the course description so there would be no confusion that there would be no superhero comics in this class there'd be no batmans no no supermans no jokers like there's no superhero comics in the class and, and like the first week a bunch of the dudes was like, yeah, but I kind of wish she had just put in, like, one superhero comic. I mean, I thought that even though she specifically put on the syllabus that that wouldn't be the case, I thought she might do it. It's like, what the what what is up with y'all like i don't understand a lot of these dudes have never read non-superhero american comics i mean we also have like a couple of like weeboo kids in there like you know like that super hardcore manga crowd and yeah i like i, I respect them more than i respect the dudes who are just like yeah um i thought there would be a deadpool comic in here though and but i mean 
they're cool like there's no issue with them i just find it super funny that they all are super dedicated to this idea of superhero comics and they've never read these other sort of comics and for some reason they expected the teacher to just kind of appease them and also there's like a solid handful of the crowd i mean the solid handful of the class that's anti-feminist and i can like feel it radiating from them I can feel it radiating from them every time we talk about any like feminist concept like um like my teacher (laughs) yeah like my teacher was talking about the idea of like um the gender split in toys and how it's like super blatant and like I could like I could tell while they were talking that they haven't been to the toy section in like Walmart or Target in quite some quite some time because it's like the most blatant gender split that I've ever seen like I'm pretty sure Walmart still has like the boys girls like signs like the last three Walmarts that I've been in still have the gr- the boys girls signs and I know because like I go to the toy section every time because I really like the Monster High dolls and I always like check out the new Monster High dolls and so I know that there's this huge split in the boys girls sections <laughs> but like they tried to argue with her and they were like yeah but in this like (laughs) in this one specific case they put this one girl toy and like i mean it wasn't even a girl toy it was ray from star wars and they were like they put no it wasn't ray i think it was leia i I don't know it was like either ray or leia and they're like they put (laughs) they put ray in between all of the other boy action figures and i was like what is this I mean, Ray is not specifically a girl toy. That's what, that's the point that she's trying to make. And oh, it was so bad. And like, I'm not like not open to the idea of people who don't agree with feminist concepts. Like, a lot of the people at my old school don't didn't agree with like a lot of feminist ideas, especially like the feminist culture. And, like, I totally understand that, and I totally am cool with that. <laughs> but but like, all of them would have like good like factual evidence good experiences and stuff they weren't just going off of like one instance like it's not just like one idea (laughs) but yeah (laughs) he was so dedicated to it too and i think he was pissed off because she like failed him that day because we're supposed to bring our comics every day and he like he was really dumb and he told her like yeah i'm downloading it right now she's like give him a zero and i was like and yeah i it was hilarious but yeah i mean most of the class is like it's like an honors class a, a lot of them like do think really deeply about their biases and stuff or at least they try like most of the people who talk like can express their ideas and their biases um but yeah that's my comments class i will give more updates on it later because it just like entertains the shit out of me like it's so funny like <laughs> like they were so dedicated to this idea of like this ray toy in the middle of some other star wars toys and i was just like what please bring up a relevant idea like like there's so many good arguments you could have for this toy debate there's so many good arguments you could have and instead of having the good argument they had that like uh, uh anyway yeah let's talk about my art classes because they're honestly the most exciting things for me in college right now like it's not like i've never had an art class like i had i mean every year i was at my old school i took an art class i took like eight art classes i was the art kid like i took the most like drawing and painting classes but the thing about the classes at my old school is that they are like more heavily project based and i really do appreciate that like they weren't really based on building your skills so much as building like your conceptualization and i really really appreciate the focus on trying to get concepts through and trying to get ideas through and trying to get messages through your art and like i really do appreciate that but like i feel like there should have been also been like a heavier focus on like technical skill because it is really important for your technical skill to come through and like to not hinder your art and and in college right now it's only technical skill there's no there's no no like drawing one is you're sitting there doing observational drawings for three full hours every monday and wednesday like you're doing like straight up here's the vase here's the apple here's the figure draw it (laughs) and you have to draw it like in a specific sort of technique i do really like those classes right now in drawing we're doing an um 
gesture drawing and contour drawing and you have to stand up the whole three hours like you have this like it's not an easel it's like a drawing horse and we have to like flip it on its side and you stand up and you're just doing life drawings on newsprint and charcoal when we first started we were doing it for 30 seconds and now we're doing more sustained gesture for like 30 minutes and but when i was doing gesture i wasn't really that challenged like i i know how to do that i've already like when i was trying to apply for bigger art schools they like practice up on that and I've been doing like gesture drawing with the human form for like forever because I thought I was going to do animation and you have to be able to do that. When I had to like apply that to um, like objects, it was super easy. I think I had the most understanding of the concept of what we were doing. And like there's like most of my classmates are new to like academic drawing in general, like the whole life drawing con, like they have never done this. Like there's like four or five kids who are like really, really good at it. And like, oh God, I don't want to sound super fucking conceited but like they're on my level sort of the other kids like just have not practiced this is what i'm trying to say and this is like their first time ever doing it and naturally they're not going to be as good at it as people and like those other four or five kids who have like done this before and practiced this, this before so i did really really well with the gesture drawing like i think i had like the most energy in my drawings there's this there's this another kid in the class who had like really good energy really good like feel and stuff too and there's this other kid in the class and i don't really think his like his like motion and energy and drawings were that good but he had really accurate proportions and like shading and that kind of stuff and that was really really good there's like three standout kids basically but what i do like about the class who, like even though they're really new to academic drawing because they're so new to it like they adjust they, they they've learned really really quickly and like seeing other people progress so quickly is like really inspiring and like it makes you want to continue and stuff we also are doing well like right now we're doing contour drawing and this is a lot harder for me this isn't a thing that i've done when i sketch i don't really sketch in the contour drawing mindset like contour dra drawing is more like like a coloring book sort of and you just kind of do the outlines it's really it was really weird because for like two full weeks i was kind of doing really 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 well and then we start contour drawing and I'm doing bad. Like I'm not, I'm not doing well at all. I'm all sorts of, all sorts of behind. Right. And what I really like about the class is that in the class, like we aren't really doing crits in the class yet. Like we aren't doing like full, full on critiques, but he'll like make people show their drawings and he'll show, like, usually he shows the good drawings and he'll like put it up and he'll like explain why this is the good drawing and i'll see what other people are doing and the way that i learn for art primarily is by i don't want to say like copying other people but okay if i can't do something then i'm gonna look to somebody who can do it and i'm gonna be like what are they doing that i'm not doing and that's usually how i learn how to do new techniques and stuff usually like in my class i'm kind of really lucky because i'm next to one of the people who's doing it super super well like her like and that's really weird for me because her gesture wasn't that good like not to be like rude or like an ass but I mean, I'm being objective. Like, her gesture wasn't that good. Like, it was pretty okay. Like, because she has, like, a super, like, anime-ish mindset. Like, I don't know how to say it. But, like, she kind of simplifies shapes, like, really quickly. And that doesn't work so well for gesture. Like, you have to get in there. But for um, contour, I guess it just works better. And she's, like, she did, like, super well on her contour drawings. And luckily, I'm sitting or standing, whatever we're doing that day, next to her. And so I can see how she's doing this and i can see the way that she's approaching the drawing and that's super super helpful for to me and like i think that's like a um, aspect of drawing especially like academic class drawings that we ignore that we not ignore but that we just don't notice as much like the idea like learning not only from your teachers but also from your classmates who are also doing well because my, it's not like my teacher draws with us like so i can see what he's doing and how he's what he's expecting and then I can sort of apply it to my own drawing. But luckily, I'm next to people who are all who are doing it well. I've improved super quickly in the contour drawing because I was next because I saw what other people were doing. And I was like, OK, so instead of doing what I'm doing, I'm going to do something closer to what they're doing. And it's not like I'm like copying their drawing. 
learning it's like the whole idea of like copying someone else's like style and all of that it's kind of convoluted and a lot of people are just like in their feelings about it it's not like i'm copying the girl next to me who's drawing it's like i'm trying to figure out how to do this and naturally my technique and her technique aren't going to be the same even if i literally do the exact same technique as her it's not gonna work out in the same way like i'm naturally gonna have my own artistic spin on it so yeah anyway my design class is really hard <laughs> My design class, um, okay, so what we're, what we're doing in our design class is line compositions. And what we were supposed to do is that we were supposed to have four lines and these boxes and circles and try to make a composition. This is super hard for me. Like, I haven't... <laughs> For drawing, I can tell if my drawing is like shit. I can I can tell that my contour line drawing was not good at all. But for this, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea if something's good or bad. For our for this is like this class is like way more project based than our drawing class. Like our drawing class is like we go to class, we draw, and we go home and we have homework and we draw. This class is like okay so here's your first project and we're studying this and this is what you need to execute it's not really conceptual at all it's just like execution right okay so this teacher for the first project we had like a minimum of 80 thumbnails to do for the the lines for the line compositions and so i did like i don't know like 120 because if you did the minimum you only got a c so <laughs> I did like 120 and the way that he did it is that he like checked your sketchbook and he just like circled the ones that he thought were working and the ones that were good. That's kind of how I, I think I skated past this project. Like, I don't know. I don't know which ones were good at all. And so we had the critique of the project because we already finished it. Right. And it's, when you're doing the critique, you, you first defend yourself and then everybody else sort of explains what they like and what they dislike. And so... <laughs> I, we got to my project and I was like, yeah, I don't know if I don't know how I don't understand this concept. Like my brain cannot function in this way right now. Like I can't see these shapes that everybody else is seeing and I can't see all of the stuff. I, I can't see like the vision of space like everybody else is seeing it. Right. I was like, yeah, I don't understand the, co the concept. And so I just kind of did what I thought I was supposed to do. Like, I, I don't like I don't know if these are good or not. Like I can't see that. And like I was trying to explain that in the con in the um the critique. And <laughs> he was like, yeah, like you don't get it, but you're definitely doing it. Right. <laughs> and like everybody was like, yeah, this looks great. And I was like, OK, like, oh. If you say so. And that's the thing. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know if it actually looks good. Like, everybody's telling me it looks good. So I'm just kind of assuming that it does. But I don't know what makes it good. I don't know why it's good. And in the critique, we kind of touched on it. Like, he was like, yeah, these shapes are like moving in space and stuff and sometimes i can see it like during the critique i was like taking notes and stuff so i could try to understand the concept more and like sometimes i can see the shapes like defining the space and like all of this stuff about negative space and like all of that sometimes i can see it really well especially in like really successful designs like i can like i know what the really really good designs are like you can just kind of tell but like i can't I can't see if my designs are good. I'm just like, yeah, okay. Here's four lines in the box. Hope it looks okay. And then I'm like also really upset because I guess I didn't follow the directions all the way. Like, so, okay, one row of the boxes was diagonal lines. One row of the boxes was curved lines. And one row of the boxes were straight lines. And then on the third row, there was like circles. And you were supposed to put all like the three best lines in those boxes. You're supposed to put them in the, in the circle. And apparently you were supposed to have a line also like a different line than those three lines but i only put three lines so i'm sure my grade's gonna hit get like a really good hit from that um yeah <laughs> um yeah uh and he also like when we were doing the sketchbooks he showed mine as an example for everybody else like the way that both of my teachers do it is that they show like the, the good examples for the class and he like picked mine and i was like okay i mean sure and like i was also really happy because a lot of people didn't get like good grades like not that they were bad like like not that their stuff was bad it's just like he grades really hard <laughs> he's like yeah um if you you know read the book and do everything that you're supposed to do you'll get a c and i'm just like a c <laughs> like what <laughs> ah. 
<laughs> but like yeah a lot of people got c's and like they like i looked at their stuff and i i thought it was fine like i mean i don't really know what i was looking for but i thought it was fine it was like a c- like they got like hardcore like like 72s and stuff and he showed sure mine to the class as the example and like the way he graded it he put it as a 10 out of 10 but then he put a different number and he put a 91 so even mine which was like the class example was like a 91 and i was like oh okay and like i don't have an issue with the 91 i was just like okay if mine's supposed to be so good then why did i get a I, I i got a 91 and mine's supposed to be like super good i know everybody else's grades are kind of screwed up because i mean like he can grade however he wants that's his prerogative and like there's nothing you can really do about it i mean like sucks and i'm kind of sh- like i know this class is going to be a struggle for me and i know i'm not going to get the best grades so we're also graded on this thing and it's called craftsmanship and we're graded on this in drawing too but it's not as big of a deal but here like every line has to be straight and square and flawless the, the paper has to be like perfectly measured and cut every inch needs to be on by the exact amount of inches you can't have your like lines thicker than your other lines like they all have to be the exact same width and like that that sounds so easy when i'm talking about it even now like it sounds like i'm just being a a drama queen but like when you're actually sitting there trying to like make one by one inch boxes and make sure they're perfectly straight if your lines for your boxes cross one line is slightly longer than the other and he can see that that line is slightly longer than the other he's taking off points from your grade like your grade is like and it's not like a couple of it's like your average will go down like your grade average will go down if you screw this up and it's so scary and it's so hard and yeah like if you mess if you mess it up then that, that sucks sucks for you um but yeah like i'm sure my grade for my this project isn't that good even though like the actual like execution of the lines apparently was good or whatever apparently i i don't think my grade for this class i mean i don't think my grade for this project is gonna be that good and like it kind of upsets me but it also is kind of like freeing because like at least i get to like learn in a space where i'm not concerned about my grade because i know it's gonna be shit anyway <laughs> like like my grade is gonna just suck so i might as well just sit here and like try to experiment and try to learn and like yeah like it doesn't it doesn't matter really what i do because my i'm gonna get a big old fat c anyway because i can't make my lines straight <laughs> like like whatever one thing about my drawing art classes that really really hit me in the surprise category was the books we have books a like i didn't think we were gonna have books like i really genuinely thought that i would just have to like spend like a bunch of money on materials which i do i I still do i still have to spend like like so much money on materials but we had books and in the bookstore they're like 150 dollars each for art like oh my god i was i was that like i expected that kind of thing in math and like english and stuff but the art we had art books I, i just wasn't expecting art textbooks at all and they were like 150 dollars like i got mine on amazon i totally i totally if you're in college and you need textbooks do not get them from your bookstore go to your bookstore and figure out what the textbooks are that you're gonna need right and write all of it down and write down the price of it like used and new and rent it and then go to amazon and see how that measures up i bought a kindle i bought a like i bought a kindle and i bought the books and all of that was still cheaper than me buying it in the bookstore and it just makes way more sense and so like i bought my art book which in the bookstore was 150 dollars for for a rent i'm pretty sure it was like 130 no it was like 132 dollars for a rent and like 151 for it like for to buy it right what made me so upset right was that it's not an actual book it's like loose leaf paper (laughs) so you have to get like a binder and put the loose leaf paper in there it it was it was like what the hell you want me to pay 150 dollars for loose leaf fucking paper but like yeah so i went to amazon and you could buy the entire book um online for the kindle like and not rent you could also rent it but i decided to buy my drawing books because like i'm going to be in the drawing program and you have to use it for like drawing one and drawing two and like maybe drawing or drawing three too so i bought it i bought the whole thing and it was only like 40 dollars 40 dollars i saved 110 dollars by like going to amazon (laughs) And that, that's not even just for my drawing book. Like, this happened across all of the subjects in which I need a book. My math book 
same my macbook was like 300 dollars. i'm almost positive it was like 300 dollars. and again it was one of these like stupid loose leaf books like it makes me so upset and so i went to amazon and i could rent the textbook the physical textbook from amazon for like 26 dollars. 26 dollars it's in the same shape as the other like used math books so but anyway like my art books were like so expensive and we use the art books too like it's not like they just make you buy it like i just didn't expect to like read from the art books and stuff but yeah and also like the materials are expensive and i expected that i expected that but like we're going we're doing newsprint and charcoal for my drawing class right i am almost out of charcoal i had like 10 pieces of charcoal and i'm pretty much done and newsprint like i might have like 10 15 pages left like and so you're gonna and like i had to already buy new drawing paper like we have like the newsprint and then we have like good drawing paper i already had to buy new drawing paper because we have to use the drawing paper in my design class and my drawing class and I'm, al I'm already like through it i'm already through all of that um yeah so i'm gonna have to be buying materials all the time this concentration this major is going to be expensive like super expensive and i also really want to um do graphic design and i'm gonna have to get a new computer for that like my computer isn't m like my laptop i screwed it up and so it, it has to be plugged up to like a power source and it can't be a regular laptop like i'm gonna have to get a new laptop if i want to do anything digital in the program and i'm going to be doing painting and we all know oil paint is expensive like oil paint expensive and i'm gonna i'm sure i'm gonna be flying through that at like an alarming rate like this major is gonna be super expensive like everybody always asks like why is art so expensive like why are you charging so much and it's like yeah because like this ain't cheap son like learning how to draw ain't cheap and yeah like it's one of those skills that takes forever to do and it also is a skill that takes a lot of money to learn like so yeah anyway so i'm trying to get my art and like my whole like social medias and my whole like shop and all of that i'm trying to get that really organized and really well presented on the internet so i can like start building up a client base because i don't want to get a job at school right now like everything is so 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 much like like i said we have like those english projects like every week i have to read and write for comics and i have 150 problems of math and i have drawing projects and i have design projects like i have all of that and like they'll have like everything due in one week and like it's like a lot and i can't imagine also having a job like i've already like lost so much sleep like the way i scheduled for, for myself i like put too much happening in one time period and i didn't like take into account the way that i function like the way that i actually work and the way that i actually function and so i got really behind and i had to like do like the hardcore all night thing like i'm screwed up and like i can't imagine also having a job on top of all of this like it's just not a thing that i think i could do i i, I can't do i can't do it like there's no way that i could be working at like chick-fil-a right now <laughs> like I would be dead like no so i'm trying to like organize my art stuff right i'm trying to get my art stuff done because if i can start making money off of my art stuff which i'm gonna like i'm gonna be doing my art stuff anyway like it doesn't matter if i'm making money off of doing these paintings and stuff like it's happening anyway so if i can start like making an income and i can start building a client base to like follow me past college i'll be in a really really good place and so that's kind of what i'm trying to do because I don't I, it's not that I have an issue with working but like I'm trying to do that because I don't want to work because I don't want to like overwhelm myself with all of this and I want to like keep my health and all of that stuff in balance so hopefully it'll work out that's pretty much all for my update right now I'll try to do another one in a few weeks or so to show some progress in my classes especially my art classes like not that I don't care about my other classes but my art classes are definitely the most important to me they'll be the most helpful for people on the internet trying to learn for learn about art school outside of like RISD like like everybody can't go to RISD like and so yeah like I don't know this is already better than I expected it to be honestly like the way that we talk about art school and like colleges is usually like weird and negative but this isn't bad like this isn't bad at all like so I'm gonna be trying to show some progress in my art classes and like I sometimes like forget to take pictures of my homework and stuff before I turn it on so like all of my like best drawings and stuff they're not going to be included in this video which sucks i'm sorry 
sorry but yeah the next time we do an update hopefully i'll have some like grades in and stuff and he'll give us our stuff back so i can like insert those and i can tell you how i did on it and like you know explain it some more this picture should be wrapping up usually when i'm doing like this kind of thing i like shy away from like line art type things like i i don't really do line art digitally that well so i kind of just avoid it really honest like honestly i just kind of avoid it but yeah i tried it out here and i think it was because stuff just wasn't working out so i was just gonna like cover it up with some big old black lines and <laughs> it worked this is definitely a different style of art that than i usually do like even my like watercolor it usually doesn't look like this but i really like this like super grungy like black line looking thing like the super grungy like cross hatching shadow thing i really like that anyway if you want to see this picture or any more of my art or any more of my updates check out my website desiree johnson dot net i'm going to be updating there the most frequently and i'm also going to start a mailing list so anytime i update and i want you guys to know i can just like send you a newsletter or something so yeah definitely check that out okay great bye